Thanks. I feel like a poem didn't work with you. Feel like a what? A poem was in his. Um, some stuff like really well lends itself well. Um, I think to rhythm and some things are good as like a rhythmic thing, and then some things are better melodic. Okay. If that makes sense. So I've done that. The one I just did, melodic. And did you? Were you? Oh, you have two cameras. I have. Yeah. I've only. I mean, some of my shit is like. I mean, as you've heard, it's out. You know, it's out there, and it's like a lot of. I'm not completely paying attention to be honest with you. That's totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. Um, yeah. It's, it's so, so some are just like stupid nonsense, which is great. Yeah. Um, and then some is I'm trying to find. I wish I had like a drum set, you know, then I could be hitting all kinds of weird shit. I mean, you can, you can play, play. honestly, you can bang on anything you want. Um, there's a tea, there's stuff outside, I'm wondering if there's a bucket. Do I have anything to connect? I don't want it to be too loud and obnoxious. I mean, I really don't care. And neither does anyone else that looks here. Oh, I oh, am visiting a pretty cool one. It's pretty scary. Uh, I've got another one of those tables if you wanted something like hard plastic. This is called Can't Wait for Fame. I'm awaiting the day I'll be famous. I'll probably be dead. Found ages hence some random hashtag I'd originated like Hilly Foot Lilliputians or Jar Toxic Honeybees or even my two posts under Ralph Rickard Rude or Snell Sickett Slew. Now, Sned Icky Slew was an impressionable young man of a story about a journalistic integrity to toilets, a biopic of sorts on pissing stationery, poop logging, and washroom entries. It was a hit in elementary schools, and my Pee Wee Herman-esque poetry warmed waves of parents until Red Ricked Rude, an expansionary tale of wanderlustful fuck yous, bag of dicks memoirs, and space monkey adventures that were around about the time pigs began to fly, and we found out where hell was because the earth froze over. I was sadly prophetic as the Christian right thought it was the apocalypse, and the newly formed sect of, sect of Rel Rickard Rudians began enacting the Book of Revelations on tape, as read by Morgan Freeman. 
it was a relic, I know, but Friedman's voice became one of the first popular voice captures and have remained classic throughout the ages. And that's so to withstand loss of so much of the human library. Someone had written different scripts throughout the recordings of history and augmented or added odd, contradictory, and at times even non sequitur sections. Allegedly, it had grown by a power of 10 from at, at its original version, including 3895 two consecutive ampersand characters, three rejected constitutional amendments, Jared Pratchett and Neil Gaiman's novel, Good Omens, and all 600 pages of the California State Department of Transportation Rigging Manual. They were overly dramatic, dangerous, and altogether safe. Everyone always seems to forget the space monkeys and remember the scatological humor. Now, Jar Talks Like Honeybees was an article I wrote about the band of the same name, who, for whatever reason, instantly changed their name in order to snub my hashtag for a drumming and a review of their less than padded like demeanor on the golf course, on which they played their guerrilla concerts in an act of musical terrorism. We remained good friends until Ted died, and I forgot I crushed a legal battle with the rest of the band for Ted and their guitar. I kind of yeah. I won in the end, thanks to the NSA, providing footage of our lovemaking in which Ted had said he'd leave me as air guitar on his deathbed. I thought we deleted that. We have, but it's never really gone, is it? Anyhow, it's on display in the pantry. I keep all my music there. It's all I ever eat. Hashtag Hilly Foot Lilliputians. Now, there was one for the ages and for the pages. Probably my only regret in life after selling my LeBaron. The greatest poem I ever written. It was a love poem I wrote for a woman I didn't love. Yet, yeah, always wish that I did. Instead of fire and sweat, tears and sex and love, above all things, love. I've only read it to three others in my life, and they were all awash with tears, and dogs don't even have tear ducts. I buried it under a secret tree, and it was never found, save its only living remnant. A silly little hashtag I once made, drunk, posting a picture of my son. It seemed to make sense at the time, only distantly a memory of the word then. Anyhow, it was a sitcom in the future about, unfortunately, what it sounds like. Hobbits. Hillyfoot was part of the Foot Clan, but always loved spending her time with the Underhills, a ragtag bunch of ninja halflings from the wrong side of the track. Well, they got on all sorts of adventures, including one episode when a space monkey comes down, and of course, his name is Ted. No one made the connection in time, and it wasn't until three years later that three people simultaneously found it, and it made BuzzFeed's six Easter eggs that will blow your mind. It was all very subreddit worthy, and eventually my moniker was shouted from the rooftops in homage to a childhood memory of mine, and wherever my name was heard, each would bellow in response to my name again, and the world became a cry of my name. So they cloned me from all the samples of myself I had taken over the years in preparation of my eventual re resurrection. Some called me a prophet. The railroad Gabrinians thought I was Jesus and asked me if I would help them raise an army of skeletons. But I like just being resurrected, dude, so I just had about enough necromancy shit for one lifetime. Yeah, it was cool and all, being so popular, so, but I wasn't the same. Being famous really gets to a man, especially if you're a clone of a man. So eventually I just dipped out and went back to 2002 and was just myself again. Man, time travel really gets to a man, especially if you're a clone of a man. But yeah, that's how I got famous. Have you ever heard Super Tall Paul? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, he's a cool dude. Yeah, that's the guy that we went up, me and Eli and stuff, and performed at his on stage in Coachella. Wait, that was with Super Tall Paul? Yeah. What? It's on his stage, yeah. Ah, oh, I had no clue. Yeah. 
I thought he was just some dude. I mean, he is just some dude, but he's super good at this. Oh like, yeah, oh, so I'm fucking. Like, good. I don't. I'm like, I have a. He makes it like so easy. He's like, yeah, he does. He's like, yeah, he's like pulls up a saxophone, a flute, a guitar. Like, I'm like, holy shit, man. I really, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not a musician. I mean, I was like a singer, uh-huh. and I've been writing poetry since I was like 14. Um, or earlier, maybe. But, um, and I've been like, you know, as a stage actor, and so I've done musicals. So I've, I've always been singing. I love singing. Um, and doing poetry and acting. Uh, and all my friends are like super talented musicians. Like my two best friends growing up, like Bobby Miles Burns are twins. Bob, they both play like 10 or 15 instruments. Bobby can like pick up like, what's this? Do 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 do. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, so, but I got this pretty uh, the loop pedal pretty recently, like uh, December or January, something like that. Um, and I've been loving it since. I don't play with it enough, but I've been trying to, which is why I've been like making videos because I'm like, I'll produce something. Uh-huh. And I'm like, sweet, I have 15 seconds that are okay. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> like two hours. Um, but uh, and I've been playing. I've been like fiddling around with ukulele for like five or six. But like, not in earnest at all. Like, I won't touch it for like eight months, and then I'll like play it for like. Did you play guitar at all? No, I was like, I did um, in school. I learned cornet, and I dropped it after a month. Um, I tried to learn drums when I was in high school or in college. I dropped that after two months. Uh, I took a piano class in college. And I guess I was like three months, so maybe I'm working my way up. Right. Um, but like, pretty yeah, pretty limited. I've got a good ear. I don't know what things are like. You know, you can't be like, give me an A. I'll be like, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but I know when I'm when I know when things sound weird or off or bad. Um, and I know, I know, you know, like I'll know if something's like flat or sharp or whatever, but not how to get it there. So I just have like a tuner for my uke. Sure, sure. Oh, and also my 